Against All Odds, A Gay Soldier's Journey to Love and Acceptance As I stepped onto the basketball court, I felt a thrill run through me. The ball was past me suddenly, and I panicked. I was so surprised that I couldn't catch it, and instead, I raised my finger and let out a high-pitched scream as I dodged it. Oh my gosh, those words came from my lips suddenly. My classmates laughed, teasing me and calling me names. You scream like a girl, Melvin said. Oh my gosh, mama, the ball's coming, mama, I was hit. Oh, another classmate taunted as he delivered these lines with hand gestures. Weak gay, Ivan whispered. I felt my face flush with shame as I hung my head and tried to hide from their judgmental gazes. But just when I thought the torment would never end, Kenrick stepped up to defend me. Hey, that's enough, lay off him, he shouted, his voice ringing with determination. The bullies were surprised by his sudden intervention and they backed off, leaving Kenrick and me alone on the court. My heart swelled with gratitude as I looked at my defender. Thank you so much, Kenrick, I said softly. He gave me a warm smile and I felt a sense of comfort wash over me. Don't worry about them, Edison, he said. I just didn't see the ball coming. I'm not very good at basketball, Kenrick chuckled, a twinkle in his eyes. Don't worry about it, man. Basketball isn't everything. There are plenty of other things you're good at. I took Kenrick's hands, asking for a shake. Thanks, Kenrick. I just didn't expect that to happen. He smiled. It's all right. Let's go grab some food. I'm starving. As we walked towards the canteen, I felt a sense of comfort and safety being with him. What do you want to eat? I asked. Mm, how about some chicken adobado and rice? I hear it's the best here, he asked, looking at the menu, pondering. I nodded eagerly. Feeling relieved that we had something in common. That sounds great. I'll have also that order for myself. We started eating our meals. So what do you plan on doing after high school? I asked. Kenrit looked thoughtful as he replied. While well, I plan on joining the army and serving our country. It's something I've always wanted to do. I felt a sense of awe and admiration for him. Kenrick was always fearless and determined. And I knew he could make a great soldier. Wow, that's really cool, I said. I'm sure you'll make a huge difference in the world. I had a crush on Kenrick for years, and the thought of him leaving for the military felt like a punch in the gut. Kenrick shrugged modestly. I hope so, but enough about me. Let's talk about you. What do you plan on doing? I felt a sense of excitement as I talked about my dreams and aspirations. You know, our family is known for our ramen business. I have no interest in cooking and inheriting it from my parents is a big pressure. Isn't that good news? You can help your parents expand your business. There are big opportunities. You don't understand, I cut him off. What? I want to do some decisions on my own. Even if they're my parents, I don't want to feel like they already know what path I'm going to take, since they're always deciding for me. This is my life, and I want to take control of it. Don't you have other siblings? I'm an only child. He nodded, as if explaining more enlightened him. I continued. They were already old when they had me. That's why they're super protective. It must have been a real pressure. Waking up every day, doing your best to meet everyone's expectations. I sure is, I replied. Despite the rough start to my day, it had ended on a high note, thanks to Kenrick's unwavering support and care. I trudged up the steps to my family's small two-story house and unlocked the door. As soon as I stepped inside, the scent of my mother's cooking hit me like a freight train. I took a deep breath, feeling a sense of comfort and warmth wash over me. I carried the small bag of clothes I had packed for the weekend to my room and left it on my bed. I immediately walked out of my room towards the restaurant next door. The restaurant was a small family-owned establishment that my parents had been running for years. On entering, my nose was filled with savory aroma of broth and noodles. My father looked up from the register and gave me a smile. Edison, you're here. Perfect timing. We could use an extra hand. I didn't mind helping out in the restaurant. It was one of the things I'd grown up doing, and it was nice to see the familiar faces of the regulars. I quickly tied on an apron, walked behind the counter, and started packing up orders. Your mom made some extra noodles today. Why don't you get them out of the kitchen and put them in the prep area? My father instructed me. I nodded and walked to the kitchen, finding the extra noodles in a large pot. I transferred them into a smaller metal container and made my way back to the counter. Customers continued to stream in and out of the restaurant as the hours passed. I got lost in filling up orders and conversations, and the hard work had a certain charm that I loved. As the last group of customers finish up their meal, my father approached me. Edison, can I talk to you for a minute? I was surprised but nodded, unsure of what my father wanted to talk about. I've been thinking about your future, my father began. I know you're in your last year of high school and I want you to consider going to college for engineering. I was taken aback. 
I had always assumed I would go to college, but I hadn't put much thought into what I would study. Engineering sounded like a good idea, but I wasn't sure if that's what I wanted to do. I was thinking about being a soldier, I said, my voice almost hesitant. My parents' faces fell into shock. You can't be a soldier, right, Laika? He can't be a soldier, my father commented as he looked at mom. You're gay and you can't even do heavy work in our house, my father said, shooting down my idea. At the mention of my sexuality, I winced. The feeling of erasure was familiar to me, but it still stung. Dad, nothing is impossible. A friend of mine, Kenrick, wants to become a soldier too, and he's already studying hard for it. I also want to serve our country, I said, trying to persuade my father. You're only saying that because of Kenrick. You don't have any interest in becoming a soldier. You're gay and you need to do something that suits you better, he shot back. Feeling dejected, I looked away. It was my father's dream for me to go into engineering, but I had always dreamed of being free, doing what I want, no rules, no parents to tell me what to do. In truth, I was a little hesitant, but I knew exactly what I wanted. Nevertheless, I stayed quiet. Son, I just want what's best for you. I want you to be happy. I don't think the military is the best route for you, my father said. I nodded silently, knowing that the conversation wasn't going to go my way. It hurt me so much that I had to plead with my father just to follow my dreams. It felt like being gay had tied my hands behind my back, and I could never be a soldier, because it was a man's job, and I was a man who preferred other men. It was degrading. As I finished up the tasks for the day, I picked up my things and headed back to my room. I flopped down onto my bed and tried to make sense of everything. I knew my father meant well, but I also wanted the opportunity to pursue my dream no matter how difficult it would be. It was another mundane day at school, and I was sitting on the bench staring blankly into the distance. The students were bustling around, but everything seemed to be in slow motion. The sun was shining in the sky, but it was as if the warmth never reached me. I was lost in my thoughts, replaying every possible scenario in my head. Every word spoken, and every move made. Edison? I snapped back to reality. There was Kenrick, standing a few feet away from me. Seeing the puzzled look on my face, he asked, Are you okay? You look a little out of it. I must have looked as desperate as I felt because without a second thought, Kenrick walked over to me and sat down on the bench next to me. Hey Edison, is something bothering you? I lowered my head and let out a deep sigh. I didn't want to burden Kenrick with my problems, but he seemed sincere. I decided to trust him. It's just that I've been thinking about my future a lot lately and I'm having trouble figuring out what to do. Kenrick put his hand on my shoulder and said, you can tell me more about it if you'd like. You look like you need someone to confide in. That gesture made me feel a lot more comfortable. I relaxed a little bit. I started explaining the situation to him. I was thinking that I also wanted to be a soldier, Kenrick, but my parents, they're old. And I don't want to cause them any more problems. The last time I mentioned it, they got upset and said that it's not something they approve of. Kenrick nodded, understandingly. It's always tough when your parents don't support you in something you want to do. But Edison, you have to keep in mind that it's your life and that you should pursue what you feel is right. And when you reach your goals, they'll be proud of you. What if they're not, I asked. Kenrick thought for a moment before he responded. If it makes you happy and it is what you want to do with your life, I know it might seem tough, but it's not impossible. You can make your interests and your parents' desires work together. The words sunk in as Kenrick reminded me that I can always incorporate their perspective and cooperate in my future plans. Thanks, Kenrick. You always seem to know what to say. He gave me a pat on the back and laughed. By the way, after graduation, I'll be off to the soldiers' camp for a training session. You can come with me if you're sure to go. Finally, after hours of serving customers, the restaurant was nearly empty. As we finally settled down to a warm family dinner, I mustered up the courage to speak my mind. Mom? Dad? How was your day, Edison? My mother asked. I was scrolling in Facebook earlier and I saw a shared post from your classmate. She started with a smile on his lips. He passed the entrance exam on the university near our village. I looked for your name and I wasn't surprised that you passed too. You can finally use the engineering books I preserved for decades. I'm so proud of you, Edison. I still want to join the army, I said with conviction. My parents paused, looking at me with a mix of surprise and disapproval. You've mentioned this before, Edison, my mother sighed. But I've always wanted to leave my comfort zone, I countered. I want to explore. I want to be strong. I feel like I've always depended on you for everything. My father, who had been quiet until now, finally spoke up. Stop convincing us, since the answer will always be no. End of story, he said sternly. His voice laced with anger. 
I could feel my frustration mounting. I couldn't they understand that I wanted to do something different. I knew it was capable of so much more. Why not, Dad? I asked, still trying to reason with him. I want to make you proud. My father slammed his hand on the table, causing me to flinch. I said no, he repeated. You're staying here. I didn't know what to say. All I knew was that I couldn't keep living the same repetitive life any longer. I wanted to break the cycle and make a difference, not just for my parents, but for myself. My mother placed a gentle hand on my shoulder. Look, Edison, we understand that you want to explore and leave your comfort zone. But you don't have to join the army to do that. You can do something else. I shook my head. But the army is my calling. I want to experience something that's outside of this restaurant and school. My father pushed his chair back and stood up. Enough, he said. I don't want to hear about this anymore. You're not going anywhere. I could feel my eyes fill with tears as my father left the room, leaving the three of us in silence. I knew my father was angry, but I couldn't help feeling disappointed and frustrated that they didn't understand my desire to take control of my life. I'm sorry, my mother said softly, breaking the silence. Your father, Deku, loves you. You know that, but please understand, we're old. If you would be away, it might kill one of us. I nodded, staring at my plate. I didn't want to argue with my parents anymore. I just wanted them to understand that I was capable of so much more than just serving ramen and obeying what they wanted for my life. As we finished the rest of our meal in silence, my resolve strengthened. I knew I had to keep pushing to make them see my point of view. I wasn't going to let my dreams get crushed by my parents' stubbornness. I had to find a way to explore the world, no matter what it took. I felt my heart pounding as I walked further away from the house. The burden of leaving my family behind weighed heavily on me, but I knew I had to do this. I turned around to see Kenrick walking quietly behind me, looking as determined as ever. You're sure you're ready for this, Edison? Kenrick asked, breaking the silence. I nodded. I'm as ready as I'll ever be, I replied. We traveled on in silence for a while, passing by fields and villages towards the direction of the soldiers' camp. I couldn't help but wonder how my parents would react when they found out what I had done. I felt a sudden pang of guilt wash over me, knowing that they would be worried and sick about me. But I was doing this for my dreams. As we approached the camp, we saw dozens of men in green uniforms training and marching in formation. The sounds of clanging metals and barking commanders filled the air. Kenrick and I walked towards the front gate, trying to look like we belonged there. The guard looked at us for a few seconds before nodding and opening the gate. We walked inside, feeling a mixture of excitement and nervousness. We went through several tests and assessments, including physical exams and mental evaluations. The whole process took several hours, but in the end, we were both accepted into the army. As we settled down in our new barracks, I couldn't help but feel overwhelmed. This was my new life, and it was one that I had chosen for myself. I thought about my parents and wished they knew how proud I was to be serving my country. Kenrick and I sat on our cots, looking up at the ceiling. After a few minutes of silence, he spoke. You know, Edison, this isn't going to be easy. We're going to face hardships and challenges like we've never faced before. But I know we can do this. I smiled, feeling grateful for his words of encouragement. I know we can. I replied. We spent the rest of the night talking about our hopes and dreams and our plans for the future. Even though we were in a strange place surrounded by strangers, it felt like home. As I lay in my cot that night, I knew that I had left behind a life that was comfortable but unfulfilling. Joining the army was a risk, but it was one that I was willing to take. I closed my eyes, feeling content with my decision for the first time in a long time. It felt like I was exactly where I was meant to be. It was a typical morning at the army training camp and the sun was shining brightly in the sky. I woke up early as usual and quickly changed into my uniform. As I stretched my limbs and got ready for the day ahead, my gaze widened towards Kenrick. He was already up and about, his muscles bulging as he prepared for another grueling day of physical endurance. And yet, I couldn't help but notice his features seemed to soften with the first light of day, how his eyes crinkled slightly in the corners whenever he smiled. Kenrick was already outside warming up, doing push-ups and sit-ups. Morning, Edison. You're up early today, Kenrick greeted me as I stepped outside. We've got a big day ahead of us. I know, I'm still feeling sore from yesterday's training, I replied, trying to stretch out my aching muscles. Don't worry, you'll get used to it soon enough, Kenrick said reassuringly. He was always a positive one, even when things got tough. Despite my best efforts to keep my emotions in check, it was becoming increasingly harder to push them aside and focus solely on my training. And yet, I didn't want to burden him with my emotions. It was enough that we were both under a lot of pressure to perform at our very best. Anything else would just complicate things further. 
We spent the first half of the day doing basic drills like marching, saluting, and learning how to hold our rifles properly. As the sun started to beat down on us, the sergeant pushed us harder, making us run obstacle courses and do more intense physical activities. I was panting heavily as I approached the sergeant for my next assignment when he announced, All right, men, today we're going to do a mock mission. You've all been paired up, and each pair will be giving a map and a compass. Kenrick and I were assigned to work together, like we always were. The sergeant handed us our map and compass and gave us our objectives. You'll be simulating a combat assignment behind enemy lines, the sergeant said. You'll have to navigate through unfamiliar terrain, set up camp, and wait for extraction. Kenrick and I took our map and compass and made our way through the dense forest, trying to follow the path as closely as we could. The terrain was uneven and full of obstacles, making it difficult for us to move quickly. Are you sure we're going the right way? I asked Kenrick, starting to feel anxious. Yeah, the compass is pointing us in the right direction, Kenrick replied. Confidently, just keep moving forward. We finally reached the clearing where we were supposed to set up camp. Kenrick started building our makeshift shelter while I went to find some firewood to start a fire. As we sat huddled around the warmth of the fire, enjoying our first meal of the day, we heard the sound of rustling leaves. Did you hear that? Kenrick asked, his hand instinctively grabbing his rifle. Yeah, I did, I replied, my heart hammering in my chest. Enemy contact, Kenrick yelled as we both scrambled to grab our rifles. But we were both relieved when we realized that it was a rabbit hiding under bushes and making a weird noise. I had always known that Kenrick was attractive. It was hard to miss, with his broad shoulders, chiseled jawline, and piercing blue eyes. He was the kind of man that caught everyone's attention. And as we trained together day after day in the military, I found myself drawn to him more and more. I didn't know how to explain it, but being around him just made me feel alive. Maybe it was the adrenaline rush that came from our training exercises, or maybe it was something more. Either way, I couldn't shake the feeling that I wanted him. And so on that fateful day, when we finally had some alone time, I decided to make my move. Kenrick was lying down on his cot, his eyes closed and his chest rising and falling in steady rhythm. I approached him slowly, my heart pounding in my chest. What was I doing? This was crazy. He was my friend, my teammate. If I made a move and it didn't go well, it could ruin everything. But as I stood over him, looking down at his handsome face, I couldn't help myself. I leaned in and pressed my lips to his, feeling a rush of heat and electricity as our bodies touched. And that's when he opened his eyes. Um, I panicked. It's not like that, Kendrick. I was just trying to... My eyes widened when he pulled me closer, deepening the kiss until I felt like I was drowning in sensation. His hands were on my back, pulling me tighter, and I felt a rush of need as his tongue slid into my mouth. We kissed for what felt like hours, our bodies entwined on his cot, and the world spun around us. I had never felt so alive, so consumed by longing. When the kiss finally ended, we stared at each other for a long moment, panting and gasping for air. Kenrick spoke first. What was that? he said his voice low and rough with desire. I don't know, I said, feeling a flush rise to my cheeks. I just... I had to. Kenrick cut me off by pulling me into another passionate kiss, his lips working against mine with a fierce intensity. I moaned softly, my body responding to him in ways I had never imagined. God, Edison, Kenrick breathed, running his hand over my body. I've wanted you for so long. I just didn't know if you were... if you felt the same way. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Kenrick, the guy that could have anyone he wanted, was into me? I pulled away from the kiss, looking down at him. You... you really mean that? Of course I do, he said, sitting up and pulling me against his chest. I've been trying to pretend like I'm not crazy about you, but every time we are together like this, I just can't help myself. I want you, Edison. I want you so bad. We kissed again. Our bodies pressed together as we explored each other's mouths with a feverish abandon. And then finally, we stopped. What about the others? I asked my voice trembling with uncertainty. Kendrick shook his head. When we're with other soldiers, we'll pretend that none of this happened. I don't want anyone gossiping about us. We still have goals and you also have to make your parents proud. I nodded. But Kendrick, I said while staring at his lips, can we kiss again? And with those words, he pulled me close and we fell back onto this cot, consumed by passion that we knew would change everything. Today, our special forces unit is being sent on a mission, and it's not one of the faint of heart. The rebels who have been terrorizing the nearby mountain hideout are increasing their attacks, and the government wants to put a stop to them. I get dressed in my camouflage gear and grab my rifle. I take a deep breath and head out, eager to meet my comrades before we start off on the mission. Kenrick smiles at me when he sees me approach. We exchange a nod, both of us aware of the gravity of the situation. 
Hey there, ready for the mission? Kendrick asked, slightly brushing his hand against mine. As ready as I'll ever be. Remember, we stick together no matter what. I nodded. Of course. We can't afford to leave anybody behind. Our unit leader briefs us on a mission, telling us what we can expect and how we should proceed. Listen up. Your mission is to take out the rebels at the mountain hideout. They've been terrorizing the civilians and we need to put a stop to it. We won't fail, sir, everyone answered. You think we'll be able to take them on? A soldier from behind me whispered. I'm worried about how well armed they are. We better stay alert. We can't let our fear get in the way of completing the mission, I answered him. That's right, we're doing this for our country, Kentrick butt in. As we march into the mountains, I can feel murmurs of worry from some of the soldiers around me. But I keep my head down, my thoughts focused on the mission, and my heart determined to save my country. We finally reach the base of the rebels, and we're extremely cautious as we approach. We don't want to give ourselves away. But as we draw closer, we realize the base is empty. Something isn't right. It's too quiet here, I whispered. Maybe they've already retreated, Kenrick answered. I doubt it. This doesn't feel right. Be on high alert. We hear gunshots outside and join the other troops, engaging in a fierce gunfight. A loud voice from afar echoes in my ears. We can take you out. You don't stand a chance against us screamed by the rebel who threw a grenade towards us. We immediately run behind the nearest tree to hide. Stay down, our leader commanded. The pain rocks through my body and I'm momentarily dazed. I try to stand up but my legs can't seem to support me. Kenrick is by my side, supporting me by putting his arm around my waist. His touch grounding me, but the battle is far from over. When we had the chance, we started countering their attacks. Gunshots ring out through the mountain hideout. All of a sudden, the rebels start to retreat. I'm stowing my fear, trying to stay focused when I feel a sharp pain in my thigh. Ah! I fell on the ground when I realized that I was shot in the thigh. You can't stand up, Kendrick asked. We have to pursue them. We will, but please don't force yourself if you can't walk. I'm worried. I have to take them down, I answered. I endured the pain in my thigh. We pursue them, and I can feel the adrenaline coursing through my veins. As we chase the rebels, we come across the leader of the rebellion. He's standing alone, his back turned to us. I see my opportunity, and without thinking twice, I raise my rifle and fire. It all happens in the blink of an eye, and before I know it, the leader lies dead on the ground. Kenrick looks at me, pride etched in his eyes, and I feel a sense of triumph pulse through me. We'll go after the other rebels, just stay here with the wounded soldiers, he said, as he came to our commander's rushing. I smile with the thought that victory is surely ours. As I slowly open my eyes, the bright lights of the hospital room temporarily blinded me. Pain shot through my body as I shifted in the bed, trying to get comfortable. I looked around, trying to understand where I was and what had happened. That's when I saw them, my parents standing in front of my bed, looking at me with concern etched on their faces. Mom? Dad? What are you doing here? I asked weakly, my voice barely loud enough for them to hear. We got a call from the hospital saying that you were injured and that we needed to come as soon as possible, my father said as he took a seat next to me. I was surprised to see them there. I hadn't spoken to my parents in five years, ever since I had left home to join the military. I thought they had never forgiven me for my decision, and I was never going to see them again. But here they were, looking at me with concern. I'm sorry, I did not want to worry you, I said, guilt weighing heavy on my mind. We were already worried, Edison, my mother said. We know that being a soldier is dangerous, and we've been praying for your safety. I felt a lump in my throat and a tear escaped my eye as I heard my mother say those words. I realized then that despite everything that had happened, my parents still loved me and cared for me. Kenrick, who had been sleeping in the chair next to my bed, stirred and woke up, looking at the scene unfolding in front of him. I felt somewhat embarrassed having my parents see my partner as I had kept the side of my life a secret from them. Mom, Dad, this is Kenrick, my boyfriend. I introduced them. The words coming out of my mouth before I had time to think about any consequences. To my surprise, my parents smiled at him. My father shook his hand, telling him how nice it was to meet him, and my mother said that he was welcome to stay with us in the hospital. I don't know how to react to this. After all the arguments and tension, my parents were accepting me in my relationship with another man. I didn't expect it, at least not this soon. They are nice, and you can feel how much they love you, Kenrick said as he looked at my parents. I smiled at him, still in disbelief at what had just happened. It was as if a load had been lifted off my shoulders. I didn't know what the future held. But for the moment, I felt like everything was going to be okay. My child, we don't care about your career or your preferences anymore. The most important thing is that you are happy, healthy, and with us, my mother said, the words washing away any doubts I had about my parents' feelings towards me. 
I knew then that no matter what paths we choose in life, there will always be people who will support us and love us unconditionally. And that sometimes, forgiveness and second chances are worth it. I love you, Mom. I love you, Dad, I said, feeling a sense of relief washing over me as I wrapped my hand around Kendrick's. We love you too, Edison, my parents said in unison, and I knew that everything was going to be alright. The end. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to be part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.